tunataka kuongea juu ya huyo Mungu ambaye amebeba mizigo yetu kwa sababu hatuna mizigo ambayo Bwana Yesu hawezi akabeba Allow me before we even get into the service niruhusu niseme hivi na sadfa iliyoje siku ya leo uh, siku ya leo ni tarehe 24 na mwezi mmoja tu umepita hivi uh, nimemzika baba yangu siku anajua siku ya leo nitakuwa hapa nikinena uh, na labda hata wimbo wangu ni kwa sababu haya mambo tunaendelea kuyapitia na bwana ameweza kubeba mzigo wetu bwana ameweza kubeba mzigo wako na hata sasa wakati tumefika mahali hapa ana uwezo wa kubeba huo mzigo ambao unaweza kuwa umekulemea umefika mahali hapa ukijiuliza kweli kesho yangu itakuwaaje niko, niko hapa kukwambia bwana atakubebea huo mzigo mradi tum, tumruhusu afanye hivyo atabeba mizigo yetu kwa sababu ulimwengu uko katika mikono yake bwana yesu asifiwe mshukuru askofu baba askofu Uh, mahali sikimani kwa kutuwezesha kufika hapa na kufanya jambo hili kila wakati pamoja na uongozi wa kanisa wachungaji ambao najua wako katika uh, kazi tofauti uh, kwamba tunaweza kuendelea kufanya huduma mahali hapa kwa sababu Mungu ako pamoja nasi na tuko na kibali Bwana Yesu asifiwe Amen Umegeukia jirani yako ambaye hayuko mbali sana na wewe Umeona amekaribia kidogo? Sio vile alikuwa la Sunday. Si mambo yanaendelea kuwa mema. Eh, hey, muangalie jirani yako mwambie we are getting there. We are getting there for the Swahili speakers ni kusema tunaendelea kufika pale. Kwa sababu nyinyi wote ni wa ni wa Swahili. <laughs> tunaendelea kufika pale na tunajua Bwana hata huu mzigo ambao umeingia katika dunia na hatika, katika nchi yetu yeye ana uwezo wa kuubeba na kutuondolea. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Niko mzima bwana ni bwana katika maisha yangu na katika jamii yangu kwa jina anaitwa David Kibera nimeokoka na mpenda Yesu mimi ni uh, bwana wa mke mmoja niko na watoto wawili si hiyo ni sawa kwa sababu najua saa zingine tunakutananga na watu wanajua huyu anakuanga kwa kanisa letu na anakuanga pasta lakini simjui uh, tukikutana huko uh, tuendelee kufahamiana ama kujuana Amen. Uh, in the next couple of minutes kwa muda ambao umesalia ningetaka tuangazie neno katika kitabu cha Yohana. Yohana mlango wa tano. Uh, mlango wa tano kuanzia mstari wa kwanza pale mpaka mstari wa kumi na mbili. Na Bwana akituwezesha tutasonga zaidi. Um, but we just want to see a few things that John says And actually Jesus says because this is a record of what was written about Jesus haya ni maandiko ambayo yamenakiliwa kuhusu Yesu na hivi ndivyo Biblia inavyosema katika Yohana mlango wa tano, mstari wa kwanza na kuendelea mpaka mstari wa kumi na mbili. baada ya hayo palikuwa na siku kuu ya Wayahudi naye Yesu akakwea kwenda Yerusalemu na huko Yerusalemu penye mlango wa kondoo panabirika iitwayo kwa Kiebrania Bethzaza Bethzaza we nayo inao matao matano ndani ya hayo jamii kubwa ya wagonjwa walikuwa wamelala vipofu viwete nao waliopooza wakingoja maji ya chemke kwa maana kuna wakati ambapo malaika hushuka akaingia katika ile birika akayatibua maji basi yeye aliyeingia wa kwanza baada ya maji kutibuliwa akapona ugonjwa wote uh, uliokuwa umempata na hapa palikuwa na mtu ambaye amekuwa hawezi muda wa miaka 30 na minane. Yesu alipomuona huyu amelala naye akijua ya kuwa amekuwa hali hiyo siku nyingi alimwambia wataka kuwa mzima yule mgonjwa akamjibu Bwana mimi sina mtu wa kunitia birikani maji yanapotibuliwa ila wakati ninapokuja mimi mtu mwingine hushuka mbele yangu Yesu akamwambia Simama jitwike godoro lako uende Mara yule mtu 
akawa mzima akajitwika godoro lake akaenda nayo ilikuwa ni sabato siku hiyo kwa sababu hiyo wayahudi wakamwambia yule aliyeponywa leo ni sabato wala si halali kwako kujitwika godoro akawajibu yeye aliyenifanya kuwa mzima ndiye aliyeniambia jitwike godoro lako uende basi wakamuuliza yule aliyekuambia jitwike uh, uende ni nani tufikisha hapo uh, and in a way of just capturing what is happening tukiangazia tu yale ambayo yanatokea hapa tunaambiwa wakati huu Yesu ameingia Yerusalemu na inasemekana kulikuwa na ilikuwa ni wakati wa wa wa, wa siku kuu kulikuwa na siku kubwa kulikuwa na festival ama feast ambayo ilikuwa inaendelea na najua tumefundishwa hapa na mchungaji um, uh, Moses kuhusu uh, festivals ama siku kuu za Wayahudi na hasa zilikuwa siku kuu tatu ambazo zilikuwa ni kuu kabisa moja wapo ilikuwa ni siku kuu ya Passover kulikuwa na siku kuu ya Tabernacles na kulikuwa na siku kuu ya ya ya, ya booths sasa yale katika Kiswahili tafadhali utaniwia radhi. Yesu ameingia mahali pale wakati huu. Kulikuwa na Biblia haisemi katika mlango wa tano wa Yohana ni siku kuu gani ilikuwa inaadhimishwa. Lakini Yesu amefika pale na katika malango yale tumeambiwa kuna mlango pale ulikuwa unaitwa the, the, the Sheep Gate. Now the Sheep Gate ama mlango wa Nasema mlango wa kondoo. Haukuwa mahali ambapo kondoo walikuwa wanaenda kulala, halikuwa zizi la kondoo. Ulikuwa mlango ambao ulikuwa unatumika kuleta wale kondoo wakati uh, wa kutolewa dhabihu. So when the sacrifice was being done, that is the gate with or through the gate that the sheep came in. Kondoo walipokuwa analetwa ili watolewe dhabihu, um, walikuwa naingilia mlango ule. Na Biblia inanakili nasema katika mlango ule kulikuwa na birika. There was a pool. Now, Bethesda ambayo ni the pool that we see there ama lile birika linaonekana pale linapatikana katika ule mlango. Ikitafsiriwa katika Kiebrania, um, Bethesda ni mahali pa a place of mercy, mahali pa rehema. So wale watu walikuwa pale walikuwa watu wa aina mingi walikuwa watu ambao walikuwa wagonjwa walikuwa wamekaa katika yale malango tumesema katika lile birika wakingoja kwa sababu desturi yao ilikuwa katika lile birika walikuwa wanangoja maji yatibuliwe they were waiting for the water to be stirred and scripture says maandiko inasema the first one to go in would be healed now sielewi hayo yalikuwa yanafanyika aje lakini hii ilikuwa desturi yao The first one to go in wa kwanza kuingia ndiye aliyeponywa. Na ningetaka uone picha ya watu ambao wamekaa mahali pale wakiwa wamelemewa na magonjwa, wengine wamepoza, wengine wamelemaa, wengine hawana mtu wa kuwashikilia kuweza kuwaingiza katika birika lile ili waweze wakaponywa wakati maji yalitibuliwa. ni sehemu ambayo ilikuwa inakaa watu ambao walikuwa na infirmities sicknesses diseases you'd want to mention every one of them watu ambao walikuwa wamelemewa na mambo mengi walikuwa wamekaa pale wakingoja muujiza wao utendeke na muujiza ulikuwa unatendeka kwa hiyo njia tu peke yake kwamba ungekuwa wa kwanza kuingia katika lile bwawa ungepona nao walikuwa watu wa imani they waited there walibaki pale wakingoja siku ambayo watapata nafasi waingie katika uh, lile uh, birika katika kuelewa zaidi haya maji tunasema yalikuwa yanatibuliwa wale watu wa wayahudi walikuwa wamekaa pale walikuwa naamini hivi kuna malaika ambaye hushuka na tumesoma malaika kwa muda kwa muda ama mara kwa mara malaika hushuka akayatibua yale maji na mwenye kuingia pale kwanza akapona. Sasa wewe ukifikiria katika siku ya leo. Na ni kweli ni malaika alikuwa anatibua yale maji. What used to happen ama yale alikuwa anatendeka mahali hapo. 
kulikuwa na streams of water that were feeding this pool sijui kama um, umeona visima not boreholes but wells wells visima um, wale ambao wako katika maeneo yako na visima you don't even go very deep unachimbua tu kidogo maji yanaanza kutoka kwa nini kuna mito ambayo inapita chini ya ya ya, ya, ya um, the surface na hiyo mito ama hivi vijito vinatoa maji katika kile uh, kisima ama lile bwawa so this is what used to happen na waliamini vizuri kwa sababu waliamini malaika huja akayatibua maji and then they would see the sign wangeona ishara kwamba maji yametibuliwa because there would be movement and they believed it was the angel that did that of course it was god it is god who causes rivers to flow beneath the surface so it was true it was the angel and every time that happened lilipofanyika lile jambo kukawa na mtu wa kuingia so usi, usibaki ukijiuliza and and how god must have been very unfair mungu alikuwa si mungu ambaye alikuwa mzuri sana kwa hawa watu kwa sababu mbona alikuwa anangoja anatuma malaika tu tibua kidogo no ni kwa sababu kwa kuelewa maji yalikuwa yanatoka chini ya kijaza lile bwawa na wakati kuna zile ripples then the people would see and say the angel has stirred the water so i am here to say niko hapa kukuambia kwamba <laughs> wale watu wangepata ufahamu ama ufunuo kwamba yale maji kama wangeingia hata kama hayajatibuliwa <laughs> wangepata uponyaji ah hawelewi the truth of the matter is it is not the stirring sio kule kutibua because that was a natural occurrence lilikuwa ni jambo jambo la kawaida lilikuwa linafanyika pale ama yeah god made it that way mungu alikuwa ameifanya ikuwe hivyo kama maji yalikuwa yanatoka chini na ishara ikitokea mwenye kuingia alikuwa na kwa sababu ya hayo wakaamini ya kwamba malaika alikuwa yuaja anatibua maji alafu anaingia nataka kusadiki hivi na nikueleze hivi uponyaji ulikuwa hapo kila wakati watu wa imani kweli lakini imani yao ilikuwa ina desturi fulani desturi ya kungoja maji yatibuliwe <laughs> Na kwa hivyo wakakaa pale kwa muda mrefu. Biblia inasema hivi Yesu akija ama akiingia katika mji wa Yerusalemu akaingia pale na akam, akamuona huyu jamaa ambaye alikuwa amekaa pale kwa miaka 38 na minane. And I want you to picture this. For 38 years. 38 years is not a short time. Ah 38 years hata sama hajafika 38 na unaona vile ametuongoza vizuri hajafika 38 38 years shida ya huyu jamaa alikuwa hapa was was older than Jesus himself Jesus died at 33 at this time when Jesus is coming in <laughs> he's he's not even 33 i, I bet because si kuna muda tu ataendelea mpaka afe So Yesu anaingia pale anapata jamaa amekaa pale 38 years waiting for the water to be stirred. Na Biblia inasema he looked he knew. Now the kind of knowing of the root word for that knowing sio ile kujua ati huyu bwana anaitwa Peterson. Yesu alijua zaidi ya hayo. Yesu alijua kwamba huyu mtu amekuwa na hii hali ya ugonjwa kwa miaka 30 na minane. Alikuwa amejua kwamba huyu mtu amesumbuka na kutaabika katika maisha miaka 30 na minane. So and, and, and today we, we, we have a God who understands, who knows us, anatujua na tufahamu every intricate detail of our lives. Yesu ambaye yuko hapa kwa sababu yuko hapa kupitia kwa roho wake. Anatufahamu anatujua anajua yale ambayo tunasumbuka kwayo anajua shida zetu so this man was there for 38 years jesus comes na yesu naye ungetaka kujiuliza hivi yesu ameingia akapata watu umati wa watu 
ukisoma vizuri nasema hapa katika lile lango there were five chambers if you want yani kulikuwa na 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 vyumba tuseme vitano hivi vyumba vyote vilikuwa na watu ambao walikuwa ni wagonjwa mgonjwa wa aina fulani mgonjwa wa aina hii kulikuwa na name it and jesus comes yesu yaingia pale akasema it is you because he knew the man alimjua alimfahabu yule jamaa akamwambia mambo yake yote swali ambalo anamuuliza ni kwamba would you want to be made whole je unge, ungependa kuponywa wewe nami tukisoma hili neno ama tukisoma hili andiko tunaweza kufikiria Yesu na yeye kwani alikuwa mtu aina gani hapa ni mahali pa wagonjwa wamekuja hapa kwa sababu wangetaka kuingia katika lile birika na waponywe kwa sababu katika maisha yao this was the only solution jawabu lao lilikuwa tu hapa so wamekuja kwa sababu wale watu ambao wanaingia hospitalini uh, isipokuwa wale ambao wanaenda, wanaenda kutembelea mgonjwa wale ambao wamelazwa huko wamelazwa kwa sababu ni mahali pazuri sana ah ni jibu jameni wamelazwa kwa sababu wameenda pale kutafuta nini matibabu na Yesu akaingia tuseme hospitalini pale katika the ship gate akawakuta watu wamerundikana pale hakuwaponya wote ukisoma vizuri hatuambiwi waliponywa wote aliangazia huu jamaa mwenye 38 years of infirmity 38 years tumesema sio muda mfupi lakini pia 38 years is not magic in any way sio ati useme sasa nikifika 38 hapo ndio maisha itaanza ama mtu wa 38 years huyo ndio anafaa kuponywa hapana ni vile tu alikuwa amekaa pale 38 years it was a long time it was a long time ulikuwa muda mrefu sana wa kusumbuka suffering for 38 years some of us if we go back 38 years we'll be in primary school hata hauelewi hujui utaoa Esther hujui utapata you go back 38 years wengine hata hawako 38 years you are non-existent wengi wetu ambao tuko hapa 38 years <laughs> we are not even an idea and that's how this man how long this man had suffered alikuwa ameumia katika magonjwa haya miaka 38 Yesu anamwambia jitwike godoro lako na uende na huyu jamaa kwa sababu alikuwa mtu wa kutii akanyanyuka akajitwika godoro lake na akaondoka I am told that when you haven't been able to walk or to do anything for many years utahitaji mtu wa kufundisha kufanya haya mambo. We have seen people who have come out of a coma for one, two, three months. And they have to be taught watafundishwa tena kuongea, kutembea. They go through physiotherapy. Huyu for 38 years aliambiwa wake up, <laughs> pick your mat and go. He was waiting for that alichukua godoro lake akaondoka now i want you also to know that it says here that when this is happening wakati haya yote yanatokea kulikuwa siku ya sabato it was not the right time for people to be healed as far as the jews were concerned because healing kuponywa kwake kulimaanisha abebe godoro kubeba godoro ilikuwa ni kinyume na kukiuka maagizo ya wayahudi siku ya sabato lakini yesu akamwambia jitwike godoro lako na uondoke na akaenenda a few things i want us to note from this story na hii hadithi sio hekaya ni nakara katika historia na kazi ambayo Yesu alifanya mwandishi mmoja ama mhubiri mmoja ambaye anaitwa Charles Spurgeon anasema hivi kuhusu uh, vile tunakaa kwa sababu wale watu ambao walikuwa pale ama huu umati wa watu ama this community of the Jews our Wayahudi ambao wako hapa wakingoja kutibuliwa kwa kisima is a representative of our community today and i am here to say niko hapa niseme hivi tuko katika hali ambayo ni ya kutatanisha 
tuko na mambo mengi ambayo yamesonga watu wetu hasa wakati huu ambao tunapitia janga la, la, la corona kuna magonjwa daktari amekwambia wewe hawezi ukapona maradhi ambayo pengine hata hatujui yametoka wapi sisi kama wale watu ambao walikuwa wamekaa pale tunangoja tu Yesu ni Yesu tu ambaye atakuja kutuokoa na huyu huyu uh, mhubiri anasema hivi shida kubwa yetu ni kwa sababu wengine wetu we wait for the convenient season yani tunangoja muda abao ni convenient convenient ni <laughs> yeah tunasema muda ambao unafaa sana ama majira ambayo yanafaa sana lakini wewe kile unahitaji ni uponyaji the people they are waited walikuwa wanangoja kwa maji yatibuliwe but all this time healing was there with them sisi tuko hapa na wengine tumeingia katika uh, jengo hili tunajua ya kweli kwa sababu Mungu ametudhihirishia haya ukweli wetu uponyaji wetu ukombozi wetu utatokana na kumjua Yesu but we are waiting for the convenient time ino ile wakati ambao unasema sasa mimi nikiokoka nikiwa kijana nitaoa aje well kuna wakati tulikuwa tunafikiria hivyo enzi zetu that was a, a major question when we <laughs> sisi when we were young na majira yetu yalikuwa sio ya, ya majira yetu ni ya kina um, Moses a lot of young people walikuwa nauliza na nikiokoka nitaoa nitaoa aje it's like that is the most important thing in life So it was so hard for young people and I believe even today kuna wengine ambao wanangoja wanasema acha kwanza niwe acha kwanza nipate mali acha kwanza nipate hii you're waiting for the convenient time Spurgeon says that is our problem shida yetu ni hiyo anaendelea kusema wengine wetu tunangojea ndoto na maono we are waiting for dreams and visions some of us are waiting for signs and wonders wale ambao walikuwa wamekaa pale walikuwa nangojea Uh, bwa walitoe the reports wajue malaika amekuja some of us are waiting for signs and wonders na Yesu anakuambia take your mat and go there are no signs some of us are waiting to be pushed tunangoja tusukumwe tuambiwe wewe kuja eh hey, bwana Yesu anakupenda sana kuja katika nyumba ya bwana utapata uzima wa milele na ni ukweli hayo yote lakini ukikosa hao watu nataka kuambia hivi maisha yako yako hatarini Anaendelea kusema hivi wengine tunangojea ufufuo tunangojea revival ufifio we are waiting for a time of revival ili tuweze tukamwamini Yesu Anaendelea kusema wengine wetu tunangojea hisia aina fulani tunangojea msisimko muhehemko wa aina fulani ili tuweze tukamwamini Yesu Sijui kama muhehemko ni Kiswahili sanifu Na wengine wetu tunangojea mtu wa mashuhuri celebrities wakuja watuambie now it is your time If, if, if those celebrities na tuko nao na hata katika um, uh, ukristo tuko na wao ambao tunawaenzi sana labda celebrity wako ni bishop wewe unasema askofu asipokuja kuniambia niokoke <laughs> it's not gonna happen so you're waiting for bishop i am sorry he might not come thank god if he comes lakini kama hata kuja ama wewe unangonya unasema mimi mpaka nipatane na my, my celebrity anakuanga anaitwa nani hao eh? TDJX eh siku nitakutana na TDJX mimi nitaokoka ah ah <laughs> it is not in the preacher it is in the name of Jesus in the person of Jesus and he appears anaingia mahali pale anaambia huyu jamaa uh, jitwike godoro lako na uondoke mafundisho ambayo tunapata hapa very very important lessons ni kusema hivi the multitudes are sick even today we have all types of sickness tuko na magonjwa yote ambayo unaweza kutaja sisi kama wayahudi pale tumeadhirika tumefinyika na haya mambo yametuzunguka hilo ni jambo la kwanza inafaa tujue jambo la pili katika lile lango la shipgate ama lango la kondoo pale palikuwa ni mahali ambapo kila mtu alikuwa anapitia na watu ambao siku ya leo wamekujua wamekufahamu kwamba shida yako ni hii wewe unasumbukana kwa sababu imekuwa public it was the same for these people 
They waited there, they were people of faith. Walikuwa na imani, walikuwa na ngoja pale. Lakini wewe unaaibika kwamba imejulikana kwamba una shida fulani. We also get to know that in that ship gate katika lile lango huyu Yesu ambaye anaingia aliingia kama kondoo na hakuwa kondoo wa kawaida alikuwa kondoo ambaye alitolewa dhabihu kwa sababu yako na kwa sababu yangu the same ship gate ambayo watu walikuwa wanaleta kondoo wao ili waweze wakatoa uh, dhabihu zao Yesu alipitia pale na akakuwa dhabihu kwetu ili tutoke katika mahali pale pa wagonjwa wamekaa mahali pa watu ambao wameganamizwa na mambo uh, ya ulimwengu huu tumesoma na tumejua ya kwamba huyu mtu alikaa mahali pale kwa miaka 30 na minane. na tumesema hivi Yesu katika hali ya asili hakuwa ameishi katika ulimwengu huu miaka 30 na minane. kwa hivyo jambo hili lingekaa kubwa sana kwake Jambo hili lingekaa ni, ni, ni nzito sana kwake lakini tuko hapa siku ya leo kusema hivi it does not matter what problem you are going through it does not matter what the doctors have said your problem is not bigger than Jesus ah the situation you are going through ile hali unayoipitia sio kubwa sana kumliko Yesu si ati inaweza kumshinda huyu Yesu 38 years na akaponywa tumejua ya kwamba katika lile bwawa katika Bethesda the pool of Bethesda ni mahali pa kupata the mercy of God mahali pa rehema za Mungu na sisi wote ambao tuko katika mahali hapa sisi ni washirika we are candidates of the mercies of God and so each one of us will be partakers of the mercies of God in this place hatutangoja mpaka tuone maji yametibuliwa kwa sababu uponyaji uko mahali hapa na tunajua kwamba Yesu alimfahamu huyu jamaa alimjua Huyu jamaa alikuwa mzee kuliko Yesu. Agreed? But Jesus knew him. Jesus understood him. Yesu alimfahamu vilivyo. Na hivyo vivyo Yesu anakufahamu wewe. Usiseme Yesu, Yesu ni mzee sana, alikuwa hizo karne za before. No, he understands. He knows you. Every detail of your life. He actually knows what you need. Kwa sababu ya kujua hayo basi tunaweza kufika katika hali ya uamuzi fulani na ningetaka siku ya leo ufanye uamuzi na uamuzi wako uwe umeongozwa na kufahamu na kujua vile neno limesema Yesu anamwambia huyu uh, jamaa ambaye alikuwa amepooza pick your mat and go uh, verse number 9 if you give us verse number 9 Pick your mat and go. Yesu alimwambia hivi. Verse number 9, mstari wa tisa. Mara yule mtu akawa mzima, akajitwika godoro lake, akaenda. Nayo ilikuwa ni siku ni sabato siku hiyo. Aliamka mara moja. Alijitua alijitwika godoro lake. In meaning he obeyed the voice of God. Alimti yule Yesu alitii sauti ya Yesu kumwambia inuka jitwike godoro lako na uenende he had not seen this in his life it had not happened for him haikuimetendeka kwake but he believed and he obeyed the problem that we have shida ambayo tuko nayo wewe na mnenaji wa uh, uh, first service alituambia hivi kunayo sauti ambayo inatunenea na inafaa tuijue sauti ya Yesu inafaa tu 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 pambanue ile sauti we, we 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 get to know the voice of God sauti inakunenea kila wakati na uko hapa inakuambia this is not the way to go this is not the way to do it in your place of work katika jamii yako katika kulea watoto wako there is a voice sauti inasema you need to wake up and go but you are saying mm mm it will not happen haitafanyika hautapona mpaka tufike mahali pa kutii katika kutii tunaingia mahali petu pa kuponywa it is obedience that the lord is looking for yesu anapomwambia huyu jamaa inuke jesus knew very well 
that it was the Sabbath and there was not supposed to be work done. Hauko unastahili kufanya kazi siku ya Sabato. Lakini anamwambia huyu jamaa inuka uende kwa sababu yeye si mdini. Yesu yeye ndiye Sabato yetu. So he was not going to bow to religious rules and regulations za Wayahudi kwa sababu yeye ndiye Mungu mfalme the Lord of the Sabbath. So the Lord of the Sabbath anamwambia huyu jamaa it is today I know it is Sabbath but wake up take your mat and go. So shida tuko nayo sisi um, tunapo uh, siku ya leo ni kwa sababu tuko na mambo mengi tuko na ubishi mwingi. Eh haiwezekani hivi. Eh the last time hii ilifanyika kulikuwa na hivi. Ah siwezi nikapona mpaka hii na hii ifanyike. Ah siwezi nikapata uh, uh, mujiza wangu mpaka hili na Jesus is saying obey the word. Ti neno na ninafahamu hivi kuna mambo ambayo wengine wetu na, na askofu akasema when you are coming to preach you preach to yourself and it is so true mambo mengine tunafanya tuna enjoy kuyafanya we love doing it we enjoy the moment and you know very well that you are not supposed to be doing so but because it gives you pleasure it gives you you know some happiness you keep doing it and though you know it's wrong You are in a business and you know it is not right. Uko katika biashara na unajua biashara yako is illegal. <laughs> But you're saying na sisi ninaletanga fungu. Sinamtolea Mungu. That is not the point. The point is you have heard the voice. Umesikia sauti inasema stop it. Pick your mat and go. But you're saying ah no. How is it possible? It is until you decide to obey that your miracle is going to come. Uamuzi mwingine ama katika kufahamu kule tumefahamu katika mlango wa 14 Biblia inasema hivi hebu tupe verse number 14 Na napotupatia mlango wa uh, mstari wa 14 Mungu wetu ama Yesu ambaye tunamwamini ni Mungu ambaye anatupea nafasi ingine. tumejipata katika hali ya kutathanisha hali ya tumeteleza tukaanguka Bwana anatupea nafasi nyingine. Mstari wa 14 wanasema hivi. Baada uh, ya hayo, Yesu akamkuta ndani ya hekalu, akamwambia, "Angalia, umekuwa mzima, usitende dhambi." Uh, usitende dhambi tena ili eh, lisije likakupata jambo lililo baya zaidi. So If you thinking like me hili jambo lilikuwa limefanyika kwa huyu jamaa kwa sababu alikuwa ametenda dhambi It is a possibility Anaambiwa usifanye usitende dhambi tena kwa sababu this time around it can get worse Now the worst that can happen to us as a Christian is to exit this space in your sinful state Please Neno linatusihi Tumeponywa Bwana ametutendea Hebu tuenene na tusitende dhambi tena Tujiepushe tujitenge na dhambi Na dhambi wengi wetu imetushika na tumelemewa katika dhambi Tusipoti yale something worse might happen Na nimalizia na kusema hivi uamuzi wa tatu ambao unafaa kufanya na tunaona katika mlango uh, mstari wa kumi na moja. Yesu anamwambia huyu jamaa na huyu jamaa kumbuka yeye alipoulizwa na Yesu pale mwanzo tukisoma Ungepa, ungetaka kuponywa ungetaka uponyaji tunaweza kufikiria Yesu alikuwa anajua haya lakini anamuuliza hata kama alikuwa anajua anamuuliza ungependa kuponywa Verse number 11 inasema hivi mstari wa kumi na moja unasema hivi Akawajibu yeye aliyenifanya kuwa mzima ndiye aliyeniambia jitwike underline jitwike godoro lako uende Ni godoro lako It is you to do it 
we will not wait hatutabaki pale tukingojea sina mtu akunifanyia hivi sina mtu akunielekeza katika 10 steps ndipo sasa ninakaa ni kibackslide sijafundishwa kufanya hivi sijapelekwa katika hii shule we keep blaming tunakaa tukilaumu kwa sababu we have a place pa kujihoshia kujihoshia is to eh? Yeah, wewe unasema ni kwa sababu wazazi wangu hawakunipeleka hii shule. Ah, watu wote hawakwenda kwa hiyo shule. <laughs> na, na watu wote hawakwenda shule. Unakao kiblame wazazi wangu hawakuwa nani? Hawakuwa wameokoka kwa sababu ya hiyo unaendelea ukifanya ama ukitenda dhambi, ukifanya mambo kulingana na vile wewe ungetaka. Don't blame. Do your life. Work out your salvation with fear and it is you. Sio mimi nitakufanyia sio mzazi wako sio bishop it is you to do your salvation scripture says in philippians chapter 2 and verse number 12 work out your salvation with fear and trembling jameni tutoke hapo pa kulaumu tutoke hapo pa kusema kama wale watu walikuwa wamekaa katika lile birika pale Sina mtu wa kuniingiza kwa maji kila wakati maji yakitibuliwa kuna mtu anaingia mbele yangu it, it is not even how fast you are usimlaumu mwenzako useme ni kwa sababu yeye amebarikiwa hapana we are not we are not competing hatushindani sisi na mwingine tunapiga vita vyako mbio ambayo unakimbia ni yako do you do you work out your salvation hatutaokoka kwa sababu tumezaliwa katika nyumba ya watu wameokoka hatutaokoka kwa sababu wazazi wetu walikuwa wao ndio hata walipeana shamba la kanisa mahali kanisa limejengwa hatutakuwa na uponyaji hatutapata baraka hatutapata kuokolewa kwa sababu ya ni kwa sababu sisi tunatii so kutii ni wewe it is personal and as we wind up, the question I would want to ask, swali ningetaka kuuliza ni hili. Wewe umekuwa mtu wa kulaumu. You've just been blaming people. You've been blaming situations. Wewe unalaumu tu hali na mambo ambayo yametoka. Tuko na, we have a golden opportunity to blame the situation that we are in. Una blame COVID. Unasema, unajua sijalipa nyumba kwa sababu ya covid na unajua ukweli kabisa ama unasema watoto hawaendi shule haujawasomesha sababu ya covid ama sijaingia kwa kanisa kwa sababu ya covid please stop blaming do your your life take responsibility usiseme tulizaliwa tukiwa wengi sana kwetu ndipo sasa sikusoma ama kwetu we are only drunkards no take responsibility na labda uko hapa unasema mimi nangojea mtu ambaye atanishikilia anipeleke nangojea mtu ambaye ataniingiza katika lile birika there is nobody i don't have a mentor i don't have somebody to mentor me katika hii kanisa sijaona mzee wale wazee wako hapa they don't even mentor people kwanza hata pastor hakuna mtu ana mentor kazi yake ni kuongea tu pale mbele you are blaming people do your life uko hapa na unasema ni kwa sababu ya kazi ambayo ninafanya ndipo sasa siwezi nikaokoka ah ah usi blame kazi pasta mmoja ambaye tuko naye hapa ananiambianga hivi kazi uliipata na utaiacha hapa hapa we ndiye utaenda sema we kama ni hivyo i have to know how to live this life so please want to make a prayer tunataka kuomba uko hapa na kama yule jamaa wa miaka 38 akiwa na kupoza na kulema na, na magonjwa ambayo alikuwa amemsonga uko hapa na unasema my problem ni kiangalia Yesu labda hata elewi Jesus is not even 38 my problem is older than Jesus you are saying this is a major thing you don't even understand you are saying this is from it is inherited what, ni, ni mababu zangu you you don't understand please Come to Jesus. 
he knows you he understands you anakufahamu anakuelewa anajua mambo yote kukuhusu na ningependa tuinamishe uh, vichwa vyetu ili tuweze tukaomba je uko hapa na umekuwa na visababu umepeana visababu vingi kwa nini haujapeana maisha yako kwa Yesu unasema ni kwa sababu ya hili ni kwa sababu ama ni kwa sababu sina hii sina, sina kazi sijapata sijafanikiwa sijapata mchumba wewe kazi yako ni kulaumu nakupa fursa hii nafasi hii ni yako kama uko hapa na hili ndilo la kwanza tunataka kuombea na hatuna muda mwingi ambao umesalia muda wetu hata umeisha uko hapa ungetaka kupeana maisha yako kwa Yesu Ukinua mkono wako nitauona tutaomba pamoja siku ya leo utaondoka mahali pale pa watu ambao walikuwa nakaa wakingoja maji yatibuliwe kwa sababu maji uponyaji uko hapa Yesu yuko hapa na uponyaji Yesu yuko hapa na, na shida yako ambayo uko nayo unasema hii shida yangu ni kiasi cha aina hii ama ni shida yangu ni kubwa sana my problem is so big you can't understand Jesus is here to deal with that situation are you there If you lift up your hand ukinua mkono wako nitauona tutaomba pamoja alafu utaanza safari yako ya kujuana na Yesu. Na unaweza pia uko hapa na unasema mimi nimesongwa na mambo. Mambo mengi, shida ya fedha, magonjwa, maradhi. Na ni kama umesongwa kuna mkono umeinuliwa pale. Tafadhali mashamanzi wetu pale nje kuna uh, mmoja ameinua mkono. Hebu tushughulike tuweze tuka Uh, muongoza katika hilo obi ili tuweze kumalizia ibada yetu uko hapo unasema mimi shida yangu hata uelewi mhubiri madaktari wamesema siwezi nikapona hata wamesema niko na siku chache tu za kuishi alafu niondoke ama umepatikana na ugonjwa unasema mimi mwisho wangu umefika na umeingia katika mahali hapa nakwambia hivi Yesu yuko hapa anakufahamu na kuelewa anataka kukuponya na kama uko pale kinua mkono wako juu tutaomba pamoja iwe ni shida ya ugonjwa iwe ni shida ya yote ile bwana yesu yuko hapa anatufahamu hebu tuweze tukaomba baba katika jina la yesu tusema ni asante tunakuinua na kutukuza kwa sababu ni mungu na unatufahamu biblia inatuambia ulipoingia mahali pale katika lile bilika la bethesda ulimjua na kumfahamu yule mtu ambaye alikuwa amekaa pale miaka 38 kumweleza yote ambaye alikuwa namhusu na bwana ukamletea uponyaji wa ghafla Naomba katika jina la Yesu Kristo kwa wenzetu ambao wameingia katika jumba hili siku ya leo wakiwa na shida tofauti wakiwa na haja tofauti Bwana tunaomba katika jina la Yesu Kristo wewe ambaye ni Mungu ambaye haushindwi wewe ambaye ni Mungu ambaye aliyekuwa na utakuwa na hata siku ya leo uko hapa kupitia roho wako mtakatifu hakuna jambo ambalo ni ngumu kwako tunajipeana kwako kila mmoja wetu Tukiomba Bwana katika jina la Yesu Kristo wewe ambaye unaweza kuponya wewe ambaye unaweza kutupa wewe ambaye unaweza kutatua haja zetu Bwana ukakutane na kila mmoja wetu katika jina la Yesu Tunasema ni asante kwa sababu Bwana hatuna lingine la kufanya ila kutii neno lako unapotuagiza tuli tuli tujitwike godoro letu Bwana tunasema katika jina la Yesu tupe kuweza kutii na kutii neno lako ili tuweze tukasaidika Tunasema ni asanti kwa sababu tunajua hautatuacha hautatuachilia na wewe umetupa hiyo ahadi kwa sababu wewe ni Mungu pamoja na watu wako Tunasema ni asanti uinuliwe na utukuzwe kwa yale ambayo unatenda utakayotenda Bwana tutakaposikia shuhuda ya yale Bwana ambayo umetenda sifa na utukufu Bwana utakurejelea wewe Tunasema ni asanti na kuinua na kukutukuza na ni katika jina la Yesu Kristo tumeomba na kuamini